Well, good day, everyone. How's it going? Coming at you from the studio today. And this is the first video that I'm putting together for you in 2022. So happy new year, and hopefully your year's got off to an awesome start. But in this video, I wanna take you through my five top tips for stabilizing your footage. And part one of those tips is gonna be handheld footage and I'll show some footage throughout this video on the screen as well. But I also wanna get outside and demonstrate some of the ways that I stabilize my shots as well. And so they're kind of like, some of them are hacks, but some of them are, you know, your general uh, using a gimbal or a glide cam. Other ones are sort of the way that I do handheld, make sure it's not too jittery, make sure that it can work for an edit. So I'll talk about frame rates as well, and the way I utilize frame rates to make it a little easier to shoot uh, handheld and to get smooth footage for B-roll, things like that. So here's a couple of clips uh, that I shot fully handheld. Uh, a wedding I shot many moons ago uh, and this was like a 50 millimeter lens on the 5D Mark IV, I think it was. This is an interesting one because this potentially wasn't my choice in the beginning because this is one of the first weddings that I ever shot and I was rushed to get to the couple to do this shoot with the photographer and the photographer didn't give me a lot of time to get in there and shoot with the couple. So I didn't really have much options for stabilization. So I had a gimbal with me on the day and I also had a glide cam, but I chose to shoot this sequence handheld. And where this then sat in the whole piece was awesome because it gave this really nice mood and this intimate feeling. And it had some glitchy sort of jumpy shots and some that were better than others, but you can see that it's not, it's more like a spontaneous moment in this wedding edit and it really, really worked. So when I've gone and shot um, subsequent weddings and I don't do many weddings now, I really haven't done one for a couple of years, but when I go and do shoot weddings, I tend to want to capture a moment like this where there's some handheld footage. And so how do I get this sort of stability and this lens was a 50 millimeter non-IS lens and the Canon 5D Mark IV is a non-IS body. So, and I'm pretty sure I shot this in 50 frames a second without any digital stabilization on with the lens. So let me show you a couple of tips and tricks on how I got shots like this. So number one is the way that I held the camera. So here I have the EOS R, not the 5D, but anyway, I'll show you on this camera how that looks. Basically one hand underneath the lens and the other hand on the lens body and always having my elbows in by my side. And this gives you kind of a pivot point to pivot with forward, back and side to side. You've also got access to your focus as well. So you can manually focus for scenes just like this, but it gives you a really stable uh, footprint, a stable place to have your camera so that you're not, you know, shaking micro shakes or micro jitters. The biggest thing is you can have small jitters this way or small movements this way, but if you've got any movements this way, that's really gonna affect your footage and it will also affect stabilization if you do try and stabilize it or smooth it out just that little bit in post. So you wanna make sure that this way is not moving. So that's where having one hand on this side, one arm on this side and the other on this side and keeping them close in to your body like that. Now, number two is I sometimes when I want a really stable shot, like a really clutch moment and I know that I don't wanna have any sort of movement in the shot, then I place the viewfinder on my nose. I place it on my nose like that and that gives me three points of contact with the camera. Now your head is quite stable so wherever you move your head, you know, you can see that this, this shot is going to be fairly stable if I move my head around like that. So having that third point of contact, and I've seen some people do it, uh, you know, on this, like on their forehead, so they can still see the screen a little bit or on their nose or even on their chest. So having a third point of contact can be really, really helpful with that. So that's my first two points. So point number three, to shoot in 50 frames a second with a 100 shutter speed, as opposed to 25 frames per second with 50 shutter speed. Now, what that does is it gives you two options in post. One of the options is you can slow that down to 25 frames per second, and it can give you a slow motion B-roll effect. But if you wanna stay in real time, say 24 or 25 frames a second, then what you can do is you allow the program and the software to just drop out one of the frames. And each frame is then captured in 100 shutter, at 100 shutter. So it's gonna reduce the motion blur between each frame. 
because when you shoot 25 and 50, you do get some motion blur in the frame. But if you shoot at 100, you double that shutter speed, you get less of that motion blur. Then when you do have some jump in the footage or some jitters or some sort of micro shake, the actual um, footage won't look blurry. It'll actually still look sharp even if you've got some movement and your warp stabilization or your translation stabilization in DaVinci Resolve will actually work much better to correct that footage. So that's my point number three. Point number four is I've used gimbals for many years and I started out using the Glidecam HD 4000. And I would say for shots like these types of shots that I'm gonna show you right now. Again, back to the wedding days, but I also use this extensively for real estate videos. And this is a really good way to get a humanized, I call it a humanized looking piece of footage. The Glidecam has a way of not creating and introducing the bob effect. And I think it's because when you hold the actual handle on the Glidecam, when you move it back and forward like this, it doesn't really change the distance of the head or change the position of the head of the glide cam. It sort of just rocks back and forth in your hand. So newer gimbals actually seem to not have that fourth axis of stabilization. And we know that there's a new camera that's come out by DJI that removes that fourth axis and what I call the bob. So in a lot of different videos I've seen, you get this really interesting bob that looks unnatural. Whereas with the glide cam, it's actually quite naturally looking and you get this really smooth flow effect. And I even don't mind if you look in this piece of footage where the horizon starts to bend a little bit, it feels like you're on a little bit of a boat, but it gives it this dreamy feel. And you can correct that later in post if you want to as well without any problems. But I have tend to leave it in the footage because I don't mind it as long as the whole shot or the shots preceding and after it aren't like boat-like as well and the whole shoot isn't, you know, going like this and bobbing around like this. I kind of like sometimes where the glide cam will just slightly go off axes. So I've used the glide cam extensively. And the thing about a glide cam is if you haven't got any sort of stabilization yet, you can pick them up like going really cheap, people have moved on to the RS2 from DJI or maybe the Ronin S, which I still use. Uh, these gimbals are really, really good. The glide cam is still really, really clutch and you can do some incredible shots with this piece of kit. So I would recommend it highly if you haven't yet got yourself any form of stabilization. Number five is a gimbal. So using like a RS2, and I know it's an incredible gimbal, but I'm still happy with the Ronin S. The Ronin S is essentially really, really good, but again, it has this issue with this bob effect, but there's a really cool feature where when you're holding the gimbal, you lock out the gimbal. So basically you press the button on the front of the gimbal when you're holding it, and that will basically fix the camera wherever it is. And so no matter what you do, what movement you make, the camera will then stay in position. I'm highlighting what that does here. So if I don't hold it and I just push in, you can see the gimbal then moves with my movement and it's set. I've set it in a certain way to move with my movement. But if I press this button in and then push in, you'll see that it actually doesn't move with me and it locks itself off. And so I've found that instead of holding the gimbal straight up and down, if you actually put it a little bit off axis and hold that button in, so hold that button in, put it a little bit off axis and then create your movement, it actually eliminates some of that bob and can get you a really clutch shot. Now I would always as well use 50 frames per second and then just do quicker movements because I still wanna have the 50 frames and then be able to slow it down in post. And the other thing with the gimbal is a lot of the shots I do in real estate are actually me exiting through a hallway or a doorway and then reversing that shot. So if I want to then show someone or reveal a doorway or sorry, reveal a room, then I basically reverse the shot because going backwards seems to be easier backwards out of a room and you can get your bearings and framing as well. So doing that seems to be a really good way to get clutch shots. Finally, number six is the super old school way, but I have used this extensively in very high end real estate shoots like my shoot with the Riviera property in Queensland. And that shoot has done very, very well over the last few years for my client there. And essentially what I did on that shoot was I used a slider for majority of the shots. Like this shot, for example, a reveal of the whole space from on, on the long end, you know, sliding all the way along the slider. But then other shots like this reveal where I'm coming around a corner or revealing something of detail in the front end of the home, I used a big slider 
slider. So I actually had like a three meter long slider there on set that day, which was crazy. We used it for a couple of shots, but generally I was on like a one and a half meter long slider and it wasn't anything programmed. I was actually doing all the move myself and I was feeling those movements because I didn't want anything to just feel pre-programmed. When you're watching that video, I wanted there to be differences with different shots and timing of different shots. So I had a few different options of slider speeds for each particular shot that I could then choose from in post. And once you're set up there with two tripods and the slider, you know, getting an extra frame or two, uh, getting an extra shot, uh, you know, isn't gonna take you that much longer. So I got three or four options for every single shot. And then I could time each shot or use the right timing for the shot to fit with the music to make it even more grand. So that's my five well, six top tips for how to get stable footage. And if you're looking at filming anything this year and you just wanna take your videography or cinematography up to another level, I really recommend using some of these methods that I've shared with you today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.